So this video got much closer to Halloween than I wanted it to. And the reason is because I want to make some of these little jack-o'-lantern boxes. It's just an empty box, but you can put a tea light in it and stick it on your windowsill or on your porch. And they're nice little things you can get together with your kids or your grandkids uh, on a weekend, uh, this weekend, because uh, it'll soon be Halloween. And you can make as many of these as you want. And in this video, I want to show you how I made these. So let's get going. How's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to the shop. And as I mentioned, uh, I've been uh, really busy over the last couple of weeks, both with, with work, with home, with everything. And uh, I just haven't had time to do this video. I wanted to do it uh, at least three weeks ago and I just haven't had time. But what I wanted to do is create some little jack-o'-lanterns. They're nice little boxes I showed you at the beginning and uh, they're easy to put together. You can make one in 10 minutes, glue it up, and kids love them, uh, you know, so if you get the kids together or the grandkids and say, hey, let's make a fun project. And uh, with that, let's get started. So I won't dive too much into the details of the design here, I, but I initially created this in Fusion 360, and the only reason I did was because I wanted to see how it, it all got assembled together, and you can see it there. But basically you have uh, a front piece and a back piece which are functionally the same uh, and two side pieces which are also the same and a bottom and a top and an inner top to create kind of a ledge so the lid doesn't slide off and a bunch of flat circles that you can stack together to create the stem of your of your pumpkin here and uh, that's it all I did after this was I just exported all of these pieces that I have here to SVG files and uh, I brought them into Inkscape so that we can do a bit of modification to them so that's that's all I have to say about Fusion 360 here you don't need Fusion 360 to build this you could just build it straight it straight up in Inkscape or any drawing program but like I said I just did it here because I wanted to see what it looked like when it was all assembled Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do now that we've created the basic outline is get a, a jack-o'-lantern face. And all I did was went to Google Images and searched oddly for jack-o'-lantern face and found uh, an infinite supply of them. Now, note that some of these are commercial, so I can show you how to use them, but don't sell them if, if you don't have a license to use them. Uh, if you wanted to, you could put uh, jack-o'-lantern faces free or something here, and it would... Uh, prune out the model or you could use some of the Google tools to look at the license and make sure that the license is free use. Keep that in mind. I, I'm not promoting uh, stealing someone else's design here, but in in my examples here, it's entirely possible that that these are com these are commercial and I'm not going to sell them. But anyway, you can just grab one. This is the one I, I grabbed for my first jack-o'-lantern. Kind of a happy but scary face. Uh, it looks kind of cool and uh, you can see there's millions of them if you want some kind of zany face. Keep in mind anything with like an like a pupil like this you won't be able to cut the pupil out because there's nothing to hold it in the in the design so uh, you may or may not want to use that one without the eyes but anyway you'll see there's millions of these things so just pick one that makes you happy and and uh, you'll be on your way. Okay, so I loaded uh, the image uh, that is the f that is the front and back of the cube, and you can tell it's the front or back because it's got the tabs on the side and the tab on the bottom. the The side pieces have an, a matching uh, detent or indent in in them, a cutout for this slot. So uh, that's how you tell. But what I wanted to do, and I did it with all of them, was just create a. Uh, a set of lines along the the pumpkin so that it, it actually looks like a like a pumpkin and this shape is centered on the page right now so I'll just center this thing on the page as well and then if I want to create some lines all I really need to do is I'll, I'll actually make this some other color so we can cut it separately is duplicate this and I'm using the shortcut keys. I'll duplicate it and move it over 20 and duplicate it again and move it 20 more and do the same thing on the other side. So you don't have to do this, but, but it's, it's easy and, and uh, it actually makes things look kind of cool. So. so there we go. And 
so that'll create the engraving lines that, that I'll use for the, uh, to make it look like a pumpkin. And I did this, like I said, on all four sides. And then the next thing we need to do is, is grab the face that we're going to use. And in this case, I'll just grab, uh, yeah, this one looks fine. So let me just copy that image and, and again, uh, duly note the licensing requirements. Um, and what I'm going to do is just trace that image. You can see it there. So I'll apply that and there's our image. So we can delete the original because it's a, it's a bitmap. And again, we can put this, align this in the center and scale it to something that's big enough and terrifying enough for your kids. And uh, there you have it. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just turn that into an outline rather than uh, a fill, just so it's obvious. And there you go. So we can now just save this and bring it over to the laser. Uh, depending on your laser software, you may or may not be able to import an SVG directly. You can with a, with a Muse, with a, an FSL laser and Retina Engrave. But some lasers, you may have to convert this to something else and uh, some other vector format, which is fine. Uh, I did the other three sides, uh, just put the lines on and uh, exported them all, saved them all back to SVGs and I'll port them over to the laser and I'll cut them out. So I, I, this piece that's in the laser right now is, is only big enough to cut the side pieces, the four sides. These are, these are great projects for scrap materials. So. Uh, I have another scrap I used for the two top pieces and the stem and the bottom, the base as well. So, you know, if you think it's not here, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. And you'll see I used, rather than the face I showed you in Inkscape, I used the uh, one that I had pulled out earlier and just cut that one out. So like, I didn't show it in the video here, but I'll subsequently drop another scrap into the laser and cut out the remaining pieces. Okay, so we have our usual kind of assembly here. We need some tape to hold it all together, some glue. We have our pieces to make the stem and the lid and the inside. Our outer pieces, you can see they turned out very nice. The etching. We get gluing here and the gluing is the usual uh, you know, glue along the, along the tabs. They ended up with a big blob there, but and the bottom of, of the tabs, both sides of the tabs. And, and we'll just quickly get them glued here. Just take a bit of paper towel and wipe off the excess here so the tape doesn't glue to it. Then we tape it up. You don't really have to worry about the inside. It's going to be hidden anyway, so. And then all you need to do is put a bit of tape around the outside. Just set that aside for now. Now on the, when we make the stem, I'll show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna kind of offset things a bit. And here we don't want glue squirting at the side, so we wanna try and minimize it. So there's a circle engraved in the top of the first piece. But then after that, you can kind of offset things a bit because what we want to do is create a kind of a hook in the in the stem so it, it actually looks like a stem and again I will take the pieces here and just kind of smudge them together so they don't get too much glue in one place 
Now, if you did want to paint this, you'd want to paint the, put the stem together first and then paint it green and then mount it on, but I won't bother here this time. So there we go, now we have a, a bit of a stem and if you want it to kind of look a little more natural, we can make the first two stack up pretty closely there. And, and there we go, we can just let that dry. And then when we're ready, we can put this piece on the bottom. In fact, we can do it right now, actually. Because this, this glue is pretty, pretty quick drying. So let's just smudge it around there a bit. Now what you do want to do, make sure is when you put this on and we can use the, the box as our template. Just kind of pre set it on and make sure the lid is straight and then you can take it off and just set it aside and it'll dry that way. So that's it, that's the assembly. We'll let it sit for a couple of hours and then we'll take it apart and we're pretty much finished. Okay, once you pull the, the tape off uh, that you use to kind of hold them together while they're being glued, uh, you get these nice, these nice pumpkins and you, can of course put a tea light in them and you know the nice thing is you can paint these as well so what i did was i created a second one here I, well, i've actually created many of these and painted it and this is official krylon pumpkin orange and uh, again through a tea light in you can see i used a different face on this one i also when i glued up the stem the the uh, eight little little discs for the stem i also painted those dark green so that it actually looks like a stem and you can see along the sides you can still see the engraved lines that make it look kind of pumpkiny and that's because i painted it orange first and then did the laser cut now if your laser settings aren't quite perfect. Uh, you may get some, some kind of charring on the sides. Uh, so you may have to mask your, your sheet off if you're going to use this. Uh, I didn't have to because I tend to keep my laser settings pretty, pretty accurate. So, uh, so I just literally cut it out. Anyway, right, there you go. It's, it's, you know, total uh, time to kind of put these together was maybe half an hour it wasn't too long it was they're pretty simple to put together and and you know they're definitely something you can do with your kids so i did a similar technique to to this uh with the japanese lantern project and i'll put a link up here if you're interested go watch that and i'll see you over there um, otherwise uh, you know get the kids together and go make your world and i'll see you next time